Hello, I'm Bonnie. Welcome back to the Member Highlight series. Uh, I'm very excited today to be interviewing Yvonne Allen early in the morning. Thank you so much for getting up early for me. I appreciate you. You look very refreshed. <laughs> Okay, so I've known you for a while, but uh, they don't know you. So can you just start, tell us a little bit about yourself? Um, so, you know, like it was previously mentioned, I'm Yvonne Allen. I am an Angular developer. Um, well, Angular, I consider myself Angular full stack developer because I started off in Java land and, <laughs> <laughs> and it was just back in. And then I eventually moved to a new company and started doing more full stack work because it was more out of, hey, this is what we need type of thing. And I'm like, well, okay, sure. And um, it was more at a junior level. So it allowed me to um, utilize some of my HTML stuff <laughs> from from high school. And it was actually Amber JS. I don't know if a lot of people still use it a lot, but it was really good, really good framework. Um, and it kind of pre the stuff that Angular did because Angular actually was um, in the beginning used their compiler. Uh, so uh, it was pretty funny to see like Amber stuff inside of Angular when it first started because their compiler was a lot better and everything like that. So um, and then Angular kind of caught on and, you know, did its thing. And but yeah, so I kind of am a full stack Angular developer and I like super, super, super love Angular. Um, and yeah, kind of my technical background, I, I would say that I'm a pretty like laid back, fun person that always like to like, I'm, I'm a social butterfly, just put it like that. Like I love being around people to make me feel better. If I'm sad, I hang around family and friends. That's the type of social butterfly I am. Most people are like, I want to be alone. I want to cry in my bed. I'm more like, no, I want to hang out. <laughs> That's how I feel. <laughs> So, I remember when I first met you at NG Atlanta and I had never seen you before, never talked to you before. Um, but I met you and we were talking cause you were going to, you were going to go on stage. You were a speaker and you had never done a talk before and you were, and you were nervous. And so I was, you know, trying to give you some pointers and tips and encouragement. And then you went up on stage and I was, I would never have known that it was your first talk if I hadn't talked to you before then, because you were so professional. And I don't remember what the talk was about, but I just remember being like, I was hanging on your every word because you just had this fun energy. And it was so interesting in the talk. And I, we were laughing. It was, so, and we were laughing like all at the right times when we were supposed to be laughing. It was just the energy was good. And your energy, like, I just always was drawn to you because I, I just think you're like, like you said, you have this energy that I, I just love that about you. Don't let it go to your head. Okay, so but that was so that was the first um, and I haven't really seen you in person much since then. But I always like tried to keep tabs on you because I think you're so much fun. Uh, so so that was the first time uh, that you did a talk. And now you've been that was what a couple years ago, right? Yeah, it was. I can't remember what year exactly, but definitely like three years or so. Good times. Yeah. Okay. So uh, let's, I have questions. So I, so I'm doing these, you know, member highlight series and I have questions and just, just kind of, you know, casual stuff. And it's funny because I started this and I just kind of made up the questions. Like, I don't know what I'm doing, you know, but it's great because I ask the same questions, but I get completely different answers from people and it's been really interesting. So we'll just jump right in. Uh, okay. So let's start out. So I asked this question because of my own personal, because I started late as a developer. Did you ever think when you first started out that you were maybe not cut out to be a developer or like how, how did it go when you first started? Tell us that story. So my story is pretty plain and straightforward because, um, I started coding right after, right after college. Like it was the thing that I decided that I was going to do in college. And it was, it actually came as an inspiration from my, my Java teacher, actually. That's what actually kind of got me to want to do Java because my CSS, my C++ teacher was horrible. Oh my God. I learned absolutely nothing in that class. Every, everybody copied and pasted every assignment. Like we literally copied from the internet and pasted it because we had no clue what we were doing. Uh, I think like, I took that class. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. The teacher was like, like I learned nothing in the classroom. So it's like, I was like, I don't know. I'm going to fail this class if I don't do something. And it's like, oh yeah, just copy paste. But the next teacher uh, was my job, my first Java teacher, my first Java course ever. And she was, I mean, she was more like me. She was, uh, she was actually kind of on a hippie side. Her and her husband <laughs> 
Packer, and um, they like actually my actually my study abroad program was um, she was one of the her and her husband was the like the guides and like super hippie backpacker type very laid back very like you know just helpful and she kind of gave me the love for coding and I kind of like wanted to go in that direction so when I graduated. I was actually trying to go like IT route, like customer service um, and tech support, but um, computer science offered me more money. <laughs> so I was like, yeah, more money, yes. Because it, it, it was like either way, I love coding and I loved like fixing computer parts. And But I kind of felt like coding was more my thing because it's less like with, with, with like fixing things, like it could be from a printer, it could be all the way from, from printer to computer to like sometimes even phones. So like it was way too much to go like to do. And coding for me, it was like more fun because I can kind of see my creations after I coded it. Yeah. Where did you so. study abroad? Uh, we went to Peru. So study by oh. Peru, 14 days. I got homesick. Can I tell you? I was like, I loved it. But like, I was like, I'm ready to go home. I miss my mom. <laughs> and I, I did not before that consider myself a homesick type. But I was like, oh my God, you are homesick. You want to go home. But like, it was so different. What an it was, adventure though. Yeah, it was more of a culture shock. I think that was because like, there was no Walmart and I was so confused. <laughs> I was like, where's the Walmart? There's no Walmart. But like, that's how you know how American I was. And I'm glad I got the experience because it's like, I just thought all the stores existed everywhere. Like there's a Walmart in all the places of the world. No, it does not. It does not work that way. But, you know, it, it was fun and a great experience. So like, yeah, love Peru. That's amazing. That's amazing. Okay. In your programming journey so far, is there anyone that stands out to you who really made a difference, uh, a mentor or anyone in your family or the community who really helped you in a big way? Yeah. So I, I most of you, um, if you're around me or know me or heard me on Twitter, any anytime when I'm giving out props, one of the main people that I always give props to is uh, Angel Banks because she actually was the one who pushed me into talking and speaking at anything because she was like, you're such an amazing speaker. Like you have, um, you know, you're really good with people. Maybe you can do like a, a meetup talk. And I was like, no, Angel, what? I don't have anything to say. I don't have like, what do I know? She was like, no, I can help you. This will be super, like you would be super awesome at this. Like, just give it a try. And so I gave it a try and um spoke at like a meetup and i got a lot of great rapport it was more geared towards juniors um but i found that they really kind of connected with what i had to say and a lot of them followed me on linkedin and like came up to me and was like oh my god i was having this exact same issue thank you for speaking on your experience and you know giving pointers and advice um because of the way i formatted it was like my mistakes and how not to do my and like how to how to um address my mistakes or like not do those, or this is a better way to do it, you know? So like, it was like a problem solution type talk. And a lot of the problems that they were going through and I just kind of offered a solution or a route to take and, and that worked well with the audience, so. Well, Angel Banks was absolutely right to put you on stage. She has a good eye because yeah. you really are. I mean, I, I saw the first conference talk and it was like, I would not have known it was, it was, you, you just, you're just so real, you know, and you're relatable. And, and uh, so I definitely think that you, you do very well with that. I agree they, with her. Yeah. You're welcome. Atlanta rocks. Woo. <laughs> okay. Uh, what do you listen to? Do you have a programming playlist when you're, when you're coding? Ooh, so it's not really a playlist. I do have like my iTunes um, music that I kind of listen to my Apple music, but like most of the time I just go on YouTube and like find a random playlist. Cause sometimes I can get bored listening to the same music all over and over. So like I usually use to like, listen to like chill, it's called chill hop, not chill house. Where is it chill? Hop? No, chill hop. And there's like, um, Niger reggae, um, not it's reggae and then Niger Afro beats. So like a lot of those, cause like you can have like a lot of playlists with the, the, the beats are really kind of like fast or um, like hip hop melody or something like that, where like the beats are kind of like 
faster beats, not a lot like slow jams. I can't do slow jams while I'm coding. I will literally lose concentration. I'm like, I'm ready to go take a nap on the couch. But like, it has to be music that kind of keep me bumping. I have to like, like <laughs> even when I was working in office, I would be like jamming and coding. <laughs> I didn't care who was watching. I did not care. I had to get my groove on because the, like, if the beat hits, you cannot just sit here and code. Like, you have to. <laughs> you know, you <laughs> You're so fun. <laughs> It's the best way to code. Like if you code and you don't do nothing like that, you're doing <laughs> you're doing it wrong. You're such a hoot. I get a kick out of you. Okay, uh, what do you have any strategies for focusing on the days that you're just not feeling it? If you're tired or if you're working on something tedious, or how do you what do you do? How do you get through those days? If I'm not feeling it. <laughs> I'm not gonna say what I was gonna say, but when if I'm not feeling it, I literally I give myself a moment to not do it. Like um, I feel like so much times, and this is gonna go deep, so I'm gonna try to keep it very short because I have a lot. Of um, um, but we as humans put our put so much pressure, like our our society puts so much pressure on us that it kind of like makes you feel like you can't take a moment to breathe. So, like, if you don't feel like doing something, I feel it's more healthy not to do it at that moment, but do something else. Maybe you need your brain is telling you you need a moment to to recollect or just like give yourself a a um, de- decompress moment first. And um, maybe I'll play some game on my phone that kind of distracts me for a little while. I would um, I'd go for a walk or um, to like start it off. I would probably like. I call it time boxing is I'll set down what I need to do because it's like, okay, I'm not feeling like I'm going to get a lot done today. So let me do my top priorities, put them down on a list. And when I like give myself a, a time, okay, like I'm not feeling it right now. I'm going to go, you know, maybe take a walk, take a breather and start at this time. So from this time I put my first task, then I say, I estimate the amount of time it will take me to do that task. Or like how much how much time I want to spend on it, probably like an hour, two hours. And then I put my next task, my next highest priority task. And I kind of time box it like that. So like it may take me 30 minutes. I know in 30 minutes I need to be moving to my next task. So I'll know to stay focused because it's like my, I'm, 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 I'm you know, working on borrowed time right now because my brain already doesn't want to do it. So I need to like structure it and stay on time so that I can get them all done before my brain was like, okay, you want to go do something else now? <laughs> so it's like, I'll know, like, okay, you can stay focused for this. So it was like, okay, this is three hours amount of work. So stay focused for three hours. You can do this three hours and then you can go and do something else. So like, that's kind of how, those are some of the techniques I use to uh, kind of get, or I just like, again, I'll start playing some music that are really get me into like, to the mood to like you know dance and stuff and that kind of gets me also into the mood to like get my day started i feel like the the part about giving mm-hmm. yourself permission to just not do that at that moment is so important and it really took me a long time to figure that out because when i was younger and especially when i was a junior developer uh i like i would feel so much pressure and the less I got done, the more I felt pressure. And then sometimes I would just sit there staring at the code until I was like in tears, just like, I don't know what to do. And then if I go and just give up and rest and I rage quit and I come back the next day, then I can just breeze through it in like 15 minutes. And it's and like, but it took me a while. I had to do that a couple times before I would just go, you know what? I'm done for today. And, uh, but also not procrastinating helps me with that too, because I had to learn, like, if you procrastinate, then you put yourself in that situation and you don't have any more time. But if you do it early, then you can just back up and go, you know what, I'm going to do that tomorrow. And it's so helpful, but it is, these are the things that I wish I had known, you know, this is one of the reasons why I ask these questions, because I wish I had figured that out, like, you know, years ago, because I put myself through so much stress (laughs) because of that. Just take a break. But you're not taught that, right? Like, who's taught to like take a break? You're, we're especially in um the American society, we're taught to pound on it. Like, come on, go, go, go. You can rest when you die. You know, like it gets a little militant sometimes, a little stressful, yeah. and they're not really teaching you. Especially when I grew up, I wasn't grown, grew up to learn about like stress decompressing techniques. I was learned to like, you need to work for your employer. You need to be on time. You need to be there. You need to distance. That it's all about the employer, not about the employee and yourself and your health. It's only been recently that people start, you know, there's been conversations around mental health and work-life balance, which still they just use that word as a buzzword. 
they don't they don't actually practice what they preach but you need to do it for yourself so like if they use that buzzword use it to their to your advantage like you remember when we talked about work-life balance remember that you said that i could get that so this is what it's going to take for me if they're not offering it up right like if they're not saying hey you need to take a moment i feel like you're stressed so don't forget to like my boss when i my, at my previous employer was like no don't forget if you need to take a moment she was always telling us to take a moment if we needed it so it kind of encourage you to do so and not feel like it was just something that they said to get you in the door. She was actually practicing what she preached and, you know, practicing what she said and really actually promoting your own health over the work because she said the work is going to be here and yeah. you need to take care of yourself. And you're no good to like us or you're not good to yourself. Even if you're not taking care of yourself, you won't, you'll get less work done. And she kind of knew and was aware and understood that simple fact that if, if, I'm, a t if I'm not taking care of me, if I'm stressed out, I'm not really going to get much done anyway. So might as well take a moment <laughs> and come back. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, what's next? What What is your experience with Angular? You know, this is an Angular kind of community that we have going on. So uh, when did you get started with Angular? So I got started with Angular around my, um, my second job when I started working at a company called State Form. Uh, they were, I think it was like, um, no, actually, it wasn't. It was NCR. Um, I started working with Angular NCR. It was like Angular JS more. <laughs> you were country when country wasn't cool. <laughs> it was very weird. I was like, they said that the reason how they got me into Florida is like, oh, yeah, we're planning on to moving on, you know, moving our stack to like Angular, Angular, I think it was at two at the time, um, Angular 2 plus, they said. Um, but when I actually got in the door and I was like, hey, so, you know, what are the, you know, the meetings or anything about like us migrating? And they was like, oh, you know, we're not doing that right now. And so like, it was like, like, oh, you got me. But I had the exact same experience and I got stuck in a job for a year after yeah. Angular 2 came out. And they said, actually, I think it was like beyond there was like they had been out for a while and I was supposed to be helping them upgrade and then they kept saying later 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 and a year later we were still writing new angular js and I was like ah so uh, I went to another job and started writing the newer version of angular and and I just I was so happy I was so happy it was our, our team was a little bit more compact we was like we were on a platform but our we our team was small so like each pla um on the platform, um, you had every like different different departments and teams, and so since my team was very small and everything was kind of uh, modularized, I took the I was like, you know what, they're not doing it, so I'm going to do it. I'm going to take the initiative to see what it would take to get us to migrate to upgrade and to and, you know I took all the complaints that I was hearing and found like and, and tried to address those in my POC. Like there's like, you know, one of them was time, one of them was like, okay, we can't get it to work with this. And other things like so I was like, I found ways around every every problem that they had. So they could not they could not deny me. Cause like I'm not gonna sit here and work on this uh Angular JS and there's like we're on Angular five now. So uh we have the opportunity to do so if you want to figure it out because you the singer developer was like, you know, like he was the team. And I'm like, but you're not the team. Like, if you don't want to work on it, that's, that's what I'm here for. Cause I want to, and I, and I'm willing to put my time in it. So even if you say, no, I'm just going to do it anyway. And it's kind of what I did. I'm like, you said no, and you don't want to work on whatever right now. I'm like, I'm going to do it. Like whenever I'm done with my work, I'm going to then work on this because like, it's like my side project that I'm working on because I, it was a selfish thing because I didn't want to stay on Angular JS because there was no I don't point. don't blame you. But no, what happened? It, did it work? Yeah, actually, it didn't actually start to happen until I left because I was like, you know, um, I'm leaving anyway. Uh, to but go you to started the ball rolling. I, I, it took a year, two years to get that ball like to really just really cranking. I had I started getting supporters like people. Another guy who came in, he was really interested in doing helping me with it. And he was way better um at like config stuff anyway like um architect stuff so he was able to like help me along and kind of be another advocate for me instead of me being the only person uh, only female african-american female anyway to just kind of hammer in i was uh seen as a, like mid-level developer so i didn't have as much clout as the senior developers who had been there for like 20 years or so but he had more like i don't know uh, it, once it was two of us and then like uh, two and a half sometimes and my other, other senior developer would like, yeah, that seems cool um, to migrate over from like the old CVS we were using. Um, so it was called P4 
P4, um, P4 and um, to move to like GitHub or GitLab actually. Um, I was like, if we move from GitLab and like that was cool things that we found, like there was a con- uh, adapter for P4 to GitLab stuff, <laughs> to, to P-Lab to um, P4 to Git. So you can like move move your um, repositories back and forth to sync them between these two separate um, um, version controls because I guess it had to be popular. And so like we were just kind of knocking those walls down and I was so, but you know, that kind of started my Angular journey to like Angular JS to Angular, but I would like do side projects. And at the time I had started doing conference talks. So I would like, people would ask me to talk like at NG Atlanta, um, I would get asked to talk by Zach and we would kind of brainstorm a topic that he would, he wanted to add to his, um, his uh, conference sessions and I would like go and learn about it so I can speak about it. And I kind of use those as kind of like small projects to learn more about Angular. And now of course I was doing an Angular course because I was trying to help my team that I actually at the company that I work for to to know more and, you know, to kind of get them started on like what are components because Angular JS 2, um, like version 2, they, they hadn't started quite um you could do components but you had to i think it's like there's one other version uh it was like 1.5 i think where they they wanted us to get started doing components before we upgraded i remember so we were still so they didn't know what a component was they were still using controllers and so you had to like i had to learn that i knew the architect but i needed to like um teach them the building blocks i had to write documentation even though documentation it's called crazy i literally had to rewrite angler doc because they were like they didn't even want to go do the angler doc they were like, hard they were they were traumatizing yeah. i don't blame them they were like i remember that put it, hair on your chest man those original docs were <laughs> like be very diplomatic and work within the structure because it was really just they had different goals they were more focused on the business business deliverables and i'm like I want to update the stack to make what we do faster because right now it's taking a lot of time because we can't, uh, we don't have hot reloading. We can't, you know, so every time we make a change, we have to restart the server. Like, you know, that this is taking time, right? We can't test this. And um, it's, it's, you know, this is a lot of ways we do. We can reuse components if we, if we um, were using components, right? So, and not stuffing in everything into the HTML that had a controller. So, um, you make our code reusable. A lot of things that we could do. A lot of things that we were doing were like those forms. So, a lot of the stuff we could reuse if we put it in a component. So, like I was like, I don't want to keep coding out the same thing or even copy and pasting. I just want to plop things in and build it together. And so like a lot of it was like selfishly, I just didn't want to do all this work, like manual work that the the new f- part of the framework provided for us. It's like, I don't want to labor it out. I don't want to, I'm not a laborer. So <laughs> um, yeah, so it was part mostly because I felt like for the team, it would make them more efficient. Even when, if I wasn't there, like after I had gone, this would make them super faster, you know, a lot of deliverables from two weeks to, to like two days type of thing. So um, that kind of started to Angular. <laughs> uh, okay. What is your favorite thing to work on? What's your favorite thing to like nerd out over? What do you think is fun regarding like programming stuff? Um, Nerd out over <laughs> funny. I like to take tutorials. I would yeah. <laughs> tutorials because yeah, I like to learn things, and every time I take a tutorial, like on Udemy or whatever, it's, it's I get so immersed in it because I'm learning something different, um, and new and exciting, and probably something that like I needed to learn anyway. And so it's fun to learn new things mm-hmm. and, and make a new project doing it. So I kind of nerd out over like tutorials. I don't know. Is that right. super? Oh my god! I can't even. No. <laughs> okay, uh, flip side of that question, what do you struggle with? What's like your least favorite thing that you have to work on sometimes, but you just got to struggle through it? Or try to get somebody else to do it? Varies. <laughs> it could be like anything I just don't want to do. And it's it's not always the same thing. Um, it could be like a simple task where I don't, I just don't want to do it. Uh, one time it was like, it was stuff with like, um, what was it? Uh uh, signatures, right? I, I didn't work with, I haven't never worked with signatures, like API signatures and stuff. <laughs> Excuse me, sorry. 
Um, and I just like, bless you. Things boring. I don't want to do it. <laughs> so actually, one of my team members wound up doing it for me because uh, I what just. A pal. Yeah, so it's like random things. Like it's just some things that are genuinely seeming boring, and it's like, uh, like this is not a fun thing. I don't want to do it. Or um, another thing that usually kind of I don't usually like to work on. Um, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say testing because I actually like testing. Um, but it's like, oh, it can be difficult. Yeah, and and, and I tedious, think- especially if you do it after the code is written and you have to like write write tests for something that's already there. That can be. Woo. Okay, I can say that anything that's like tell me like what are you gonna achieve? I, I'm like oh, I don't know. Whatever comes to mind. The goal is just, <laughs> all these like like company goals. Like, that's what you just tell me what I need to accomplish, and then I'll do it. Not like ask yeah. me do like roadmaps. I like when I was working at um, Devro because I just got there and I was asked to do a roadmap and. I was like, I don't know what this is. So it was hard for me to do it. And like, it's like, you know, trying to do goals, like having to write down like all that paperwork about goals and stuff. It's like, I don't know. I don't know what I could achieve. Can you just tell me? Like, I just, can I just get the answer and I'm just going to write it down. (laughs) So those, those are pretty hard for me to try to like have goals that I have to like manage and accomplish. Like as far as like with other, like to, Dealing with other companies. I can set my own goals, fine. But like if I have to set goals for a company, like how I want to achieve Well, things. especially if you're if you're new to the team, I think that would be difficult for anyone. Yeah. 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 I think you get a pass on that one. Thank you. Okay. Oh, woo. I moved and my thing fell out. I'm here. I'm here. Okay. So this is good. Can you hear me? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, okay, so because you you get so excited sometimes about uh, things, and I love that about you, and I love that energy, and I really love the fact that you just had to do the proof of concept from the Angular JS to the Angular, right? Because that's, I mean, that's th- that kind of energy, that kind of initiative is really amazing. So, uh, so what's your job situation? Are you available for work? Because I know a lot of people who are looking. Are you working? Are you are you looking? Are you contracting? What's the story? Yeah, I'm currently available to work um remote preferably you know because of these corona times <laughs> i think we're all remote at this point point. and you're based out of atlanta yeah yeah i'm based out of atlanta and I mostly do angler i haven't done react you probably won't find me doing react uh not of any prejudice it's just i don't know i just i'm really in love with angler i would do it if i have to but mostly um Definitely just find me digging in the weeds with Angular, learning more Angular stuff. And I'll do like full stack, of course, like Java back in, Node back in. Um, but yeah, those are like what I usually kind of gear, gear myself towards. Well, I know a lot of people who are looking right now, so uh, I'll have to send them links to this and, and let them know. I actually know somebody in Atlanta who's looking, so I'll I'll uh, introduce you two to each other. Okay. I, I'm totally down for it. Yeah. Uh, okay. Two more questions. Uh, how do you define job satisfaction as a developer? Like, what is it that makes that makes you feel fulfilled at the end of the day? Um, definitely having a great team culture, uh, a great lifting. You know, there's no weak link. There's only team members that's pitching in to help out and lift each other up. I, I thrive better in those type of environments. I don't like cutthroat environments where it's like you're always acting like you're too busy to help because there's always time, you know, to help out and to just give a few minutes of your time to lend someone a hand and don't leave them struggling. Like that's not team. That's an I, right? That's not a, there's no I in team. And it's to make the whole team progress, pitching in and like usually you learn something. You always learn something, even if it's something that, a subject that you've been doing for a long time, you either learn how to teach it better, how to help better, or something that you just didn't know or just didn't know that got changed, you know? So uh, helping out and having that type of environment, culture where it's like, um, where there's compliments just given out just because you did something right. Because um, helping a team member realize like, hey, you, you did this, you helped me out with this, kudos, you know, thank you, giving out proper thanks and appreciation, making that part of the culture. Like I learned that in my recent employer at Vonage, they have a great, they have an applaud system where they have a plot points where 
um, if someone helps you out, you have points that they give you to give to someone else. And then some people can give you points too. And they're like at the end of the year or at any time you want to, you can um, cash those applaud points in for like gifts and things like that. And that kind of creates a culture of being thankful and appreciative because you wow. have these opportunities to say like someone did something for you and give thanks and like make someone feel just uh just flourish because it was like it it was applauded it was like you know um there was a lot of um a lot of attention drawn around of uh, giving thanks and helping others like literally in helping other culture uh so i love that type of environment i love like we did like happy hours virtually and you know you where you got to know the team and did we did like donuts where you can meet one-on-one with someone and learn about them um and learn about them like outside of a meeting because you don't get to meet with everybody or some people aren't actually on your actual immediate team but they're part of your department and you get to meet other people and develop different connections and and like get help and like oh like oh he does this or she does this i can ping her and have the environment open so like those kind of things like you can feel free to learn and like so we would piggyback off each other's knowledge because we knew who know what and also um, we can pitch in and help and they can help us. So like, it doesn't matter how much knowledge you come in with. It doesn't, it doesn't do the company or your department or team any good if you're not willing to share it and help others thrive. So like, it doesn't matter like whether, like it all boils down to me is about your, your, your company environment. Cause you can learn anything, but it's all about how you're being, yeah. How you're being like, um, encouraged to the environment. Yeah. And, and that's what kind of makes it like, you know, makes you want to go to work. Absolutely. I agree. It was funny because I read an article. Uh, I don't know. I read things and then I forget where I read them, but I read an article a long time ago and it was something about, would you rather have, like they did a study or a survey or something. Would you rather have like, um, uh, um, thank you from your boss for the job that you did or um, like a pizza party or a little bit of extra money as a bonus and the appreciation from the boss was like as popular if not more popular than actual cash money because people really want to know they want to hear from their boss that they did a good job and that they were appreciated and it just means so much and it's crazy that it's like some people care about that more than money um and of yeah. course money's important but i mean it does it does make a big difference not too, you work really hard so like to to like spend hours on end weeks on one issue right one problem one feature and then it, to have it go unnoticed and sometimes overlooked, definitely overlooked sometimes, right? Um, yeah, like, oh, that's not even going in the master branch now. We're gonna, we're gonna just no, toss that no, aside. We're not no, even no. using that code. Oh, I worked so hard. Yeah, so like to get like a thank you would be awesome because it's spent hard, sweat and tears, and you know, hands just working. Absolutely. So. Okay, last question. What are you working on? What are you excited about? What is next for Yvonne? Uh, one of the things is it's a surprise. So if it if it actually happens, um, it'll be awesome. But I definitely did. I'm just gonna say it. I interview um in the interview process for GDE Angler GDE, and hopefully I get it. I feel like it's such a like a um. If you ever join like a fraternity or a sorority thing, it's like you, it's a secret until it's out, right? Whether you got it or not. Why? I don't know why it's such a secret. Just is it just it's it's just GDE. Um, As but, an Angular GDE, I would like to say that I think you would be an amazing Angular GDE. So I'm definitely <laughs> rooting for you. I think you'd be a very. I think you should be a GDE. If they ask me, I'll tell them. Yeah. Thank you. So yeah, working on that. So working on uh, the interview process for GDE. Um, I just spoke at NG, um, was it Enterprise NG? So mm -hmm. that was fun. Um, and yeah, just more Angular stuff to just crank on and crank out, you know? That's awesome. Uh, I sent you a link. I think I sent you a couple. I have a cat outside the window. Uh, to the Call for Papers channel in Angular Nation. Did you get a chance to get in there? Because there are some other uh, meetups. And <clears throat> I think they would love you. Awesome. Yeah, I have to go check a look. I, I haven't had a chance to, to, to get in that channel. There are some meetup organizers that are lurking in that channel. And if you go in there and post um, <clears throat> what kind of stuff you'd like to talk about, then they can reach out to you and 
Oh, and I'm also, and one other thing I'm doing is I'm starting to contribute more like to the docs part of uh, Angular. The so yeah. you recently You're working with uh, Dave and Kapuna Hala. Yeah, I think it's yeah Dave. Um, I love Dave Shevitz. He's so fun. And yeah. do you, have you met Mark Thompson yet? No, I have not. Yvonne. Okay, you are gonna love him because he's a hoot and he is a nut. He's just so goofy and fun, just like you are. And it's and you're gonna like him a lot. He's just he just always brings that energy for every single meeting, and I love him. And Dave Shevitz also. He's like a really, really. He's very polite and he's very nice. But like once he gets, you know, he's funny. They're both funny. They're funny guys. They they really are. I like them. The um the. His tando is like A K I D A V, I think it is. That's Dave Shevitz. Yeah. Okay. This Aikido, one. I think. Yeah, he's great. I just submitted one PR, and then so we're working on like other PRs. I can like some um, issues I can submit for. He was like, it's very rare that I find people that actually want to like help with the doc stuff, and I was like, mm, I'm not doing anything at this moment. So <laughs> that's great. Yeah, we need to, I need to put together a meetup because there are some other people that I know that have been contributing to the docs lately that also have not met Dave. And I want to do like a, a docs happy hour sometime so that all the people who are doing that can like get together on a video call. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that soon. And I will make sure that you're in the invitation and I'll make sure that it's not too early in the day. But there's a bunch of other people in America, too. So you'll be fine. It'll be yeah. fine. Yeah. All right, my dear. Thank you so much. This was so fun. I love your energy. I get a kick out of you. You just crack me up and you make me laugh. And uh, thank you again for getting up so early and bringing this energy so early in the morning. You are so fun. And I hope that we see each other again soon and often. Thank you so much. I, I had a great time. It was a blast as always. Thank right. <laughs> yeah. I'll see you soon. Okay. Bye. Bye.